In this previous video, we talked about a number of common research methods that bachelor's and master's students may use in conducting applied business research. In this video, we are going to supplement those research methods with three new ones – nanography, media content analysis, and big data research. Starting with nanography. Nanography is an internet-based research method created by Robert Kozinets, and this is how the gentleman looks like. Simply put, nanography means collecting data from social media sites, review sites, discussion forums, or other forms of online communities for the purpose of analysis and research. Generally speaking, nanography is considered a qualitative research method, and this is because, usually, the data that the researchers collect from social media sites, review sites, discussion forums, and other online communities are typically textual, thereby making this research process quite qualitative. For instance, analyzing a particular type of social media posts regarding a specific topic, the researcher would gather a large amount of comments and posts for the purpose of some form of qualitative data analysis. The way the researcher analyzes these textual data could be similar to other qualitative analytical methods, such as coding, qualitative content analysis, thematic analysis, etc. Let's take a look at a couple of studies that actually used nanography. In this study, done by myself and a dear colleague, the authors collected internet posts from discussion forums regarding employees' opinions concerning team-building activities. The collected data were all textual, so they were analyzed through coding and thematic analysis. Employees' attitudes and behavioral tendencies were then modeled into a two-dimensional coordinate system. Another nanographic study, the researchers collected 23 discussion threads from various websites regarding their chosen research topic. Data were analyzed qualitatively, representative and illustrative quotes are shown, categories and themes formulated and presented in their results. So, nanography is not considered an accepted research method for applied business research as well as social sciences research. I should note, nanography has also been developing and evolving. The two examples that we just looked at are rather traditional nanographic studies using or analyzing textual data, which is kind of old-fashioned already. Because right now, I know fellow researchers and colleagues who are conducting nanographic studies in virtual spaces and meta spaces, so they are no longer collecting and analyzing textual data. They are actually observing virtual players' behaviors in digital spaces. In other words, nanography is now truly become ethnography in a virtual world. So, as the internet evolves and changes, nanography as a research method is also evolving. Now, let's talk about another research method, media content analysis, or the analysis of published mass media content such as TV shows, movies, advertisements, music videos, news broadcasts, online videos, etc. So this method is rather straightforward. Researchers would watch or read and analyze, for instance, TV shows and movies, news coverage of a particular subject or topic for various research purposes. Let's look at two examples. Here's a study which examined how housekeeping work and housekeepers are portrayed in Hotel Babylon, a TV series from the UK. Their analysis centered on how housekeeping work and housekeeping employees are typically depicted in this TV show, and the researchers related these depictions to potential societal effects such as employment tendencies. It's an interesting read. Following this example, some colleagues and myself conducted a similar media content analysis study in which we investigated how hospitality and hotel work were represented in popular movies. Using the website of the International Movie Database, we selected a number of movies which were set in hotels and analyzed how they related to and depicted the concept of hospitableness and hospitality work. The analysis resulted in the formulation of a codebook for further media content analysis on hospitality. We wrote this study up as a conference paper. So this TV study and this movie study are two examples of using mass media content analysis as a research method for applied business research. Finally, let's take a look at the last new research method that we want to cover in this video – big data research. With the development of the internet and digital technologies, the amount of data that we have access to has exceeded what can be traditionally stored on a single device and be processed by traditional software programs for data analysis. Now, using web crawler software and cloud computing programs, researchers can analyze datasets which are way too large for a single computer to process. 
We're talking about data sets that contain terabytes or petabytes of data, and this will probably only continue to grow. In the early 2000s, a data set of 1 GB in size was considered big data. Now it's not. Depending on when you might be watching this video, this may all be considered quite outdated. But for now, we do see more papers published using big data analysis as their main research method. So instead of the researchers going into the field and collecting empirical data themselves for analysis, they would analyze essentially existing big data for the purpose of answering their research questions or testing their hypotheses. Although in this case, getting to these data might require some work. Let's look at a few examples. Here's a study where the authors used a web crawler tool to obtain data from the servers of two hotel booking platforms. Then they retrieved geographical data from Google Earth and Baidu Map. The resulting data set may not be huge, but to get to these data, they tapped into various big data pools. In this other study, the authors used a customized Python program to extract data from the TripAdvisor server. The final data set used for analysis included over 127,000 individual level reviews. And in this final example, the authors wrote an algorithm to extract data from the Airbnb server, which they then combined with hotel occupancy data from the Ministry of Tourism of Mexico for analysis. In all three cases, the final data sets used for analysis may not be big data, but the authors extracted these data from pools of big data. In addition to this approach, researchers could also perform analysis directly on big data sets using various cloud computing programs such as BigQuery, Cloudera, Databricks, and Athena, etc. Big data research is the only research method from this list that I myself have not personally had experiences with yet. But I am embarking with a colleague on our first big data analysis study. Once that has been done and published, I will probably make another video about that study, so stay tuned. Compared to more traditional business research methods such as survey, interviewing, focus group, etc., these three research methods that we just talked about today do have the advantage of the researcher not having to deal with empirical data collection. That is, we know collecting empirical data could be quite troublesome. If you have ever tried to convince people to fit out your survey or to consent to be interviewed and recorded, you know how much resistance there may be because of survey fatigue, privacy concerns, and the fact that people are just really busy with their own lives. People are usually not very willing to help when researchers are trying to collect empirical data from them. And that is a major difficulty that researchers often have to contend with. But with nanography, media content analysis, and big data analysis, that difficulty is not something that one had to deal with a whole lot. Because with these three research methods, the data are already out there. And that is a practical advantage that might make these three research methods rather attractive. So, Taken together, these three research methods, together with the methods that we discussed in my previous video, this list here represents a number of common research methods that bachelor's and master's students may use in conducting applied business research and social sciences research. Hope you have found this video informative. As always, I invite you to leave your thoughts and comments down below. Thanks for watching this random video. Please share, comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.